Here you have the Johnny Appleseed of terrorism wandering the country with his little sack of anthrax. 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 I don't have anthrax. He does not have anthrax. Okay, you get the point. As of the 21st century, the anthrax toxin has become increasingly important. But what makes this toxin so deadly? How does its structure give rise to its unique biological properties? The anthrax toxin is composed of three separate molecules, or moieties, that have distinct functions. These three molecules are the protective antigen, edema factor, and lethal factor. The three molecules operate under a synergistic effect that disrupts cellular function, eventually leading to cell death. The delivery mechanism of this toxin is based on the protective antigen, labeled PA in this diagram. In fact, the name is from its use for anthrax vaccines. The 83 kilodalton PA monomer identifies the cell surface by binding to the anthrax toxin receptor, or ATR. In humans, a protease known as furin excises a portion of PA. Once bound, the 20 kilodalton N-terminal fragment is cleaved off, leaving behind the remaining 63 kilodalton portion. PA-63 rapidly oligomerizes to form a heptamer. It is believed that the oligoheptamer extends into the membrane to form a pore, or passage, into the cell. Let's take a look at the structure of a single PA subunit. It is organized into anti-parallel beta sheets with four distinct domains. The two critical domains for binding are 1 and 4. Domain 4 is the carboxy terminal domain that binds to the ATR receptor. Mutating a small flexible loop of domain 4 by introducing alanine substitutions results in a lower affinity to the ATR receptor. This sequence of amino acids represents the receptor binding region of the protective antigen. Domain 1, the amino terminal domain, contains two calcium ions that primarily play a structural role. They introduce a conformation that allows EF and LF to bind after the oligoheptamer is formed. Here is the oligoheptamer with one subunit outlined. Now, let's examine the actual binding site of EF and LF within the heptamer. A single PA63 subunit, shown in light blue, contains the binding site for EF and LF. Experiments have shown that replacement of any of six highlighted residues of domain 1 with alanine almost completely eliminate effector binding. Several of these residues are located in a region that interacts with an adjacent PA63 subunit, shown in dark blue. These results, together with the finding that ligand binding depends on heptamer formation, suggest that the ligand binding site of EF and LF might span the subunit-subunit interface. The two other proteins of anthrax toxin are both enzymes that disrupt the signaling functions of the cell. Once they bind to the heptamer, they are delivered by endocytosis into the cytoplasm. The edema factor is an adenyl cyclase enzyme. All classes of adenyl cyclase enzymes catalyze the conversion of ATP to 3,5-cyclic AMP, or CAMP, and pyrophosphate. As a result, these enzymes require a magnesium cofactor to shield the negative charge of the phosphate groups. Inside the cell, the edema factor is activated by binding to calmodulin, which is a calcium binding messenger protein. On the left PDB entry, EF is shown before activation. On the right entry, EF is shown after activation. Calmodulin, which is shown in yellow, produces a conformational change, making the active site more available. Within this activated form, the two purple loops form part of the active site. EF can now hold ATP more efficiently and convert it to cyclic AMP at a faster rate. The CAMP formed by adenyl cyclases acts as a second messenger. When peptides, such as glucagon, bind hormone receptors, a signal transduction cascade occurs, resulting in CAMP formation. Then, CAMP binding activates protein kinases. These kinases phosphorylate enzymes for downstream activities. Edema factor increases the cellular concentration of cyclic AMP without the need for hormone signaling. Therefore, it floods the cell with cyclic AMP, destroying the careful balance normally achieved by hormones. Lastly, let's examine the lethal factor. Lethal factor is a protease that degrades mitogen-activated protein kinase kinases, or MAPKKs. 
These kinases are vital to another signaling pathway that guides cell growth and proliferation. By destroying an MAPKK within the downstream cascade, signaling molecules involved in cell proliferation and protein synthesis will be inhibited. As you can tell, this is a pretty bad thing for your cells.